Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my craft space. Today we're going to be continuing on with our mass making Reader's Digest junk journals or altered books. Um, I don't really call them altered books because we took the book blocks out of them, uh, but junk journals, um, what have you. So this is what they should look like where we left off. I know some people uh, commented about this fabric hanging off. At this point you can cut it off flush to the book if you'd like or you can glue it up. Um, I will personally be covering the spine later after I sew in the signatures, so if it's folded up that's when I usually would do that. Uh, you can do it now if you so choose or you can just um, leave it and continue on. So uh, at this point in the process we need to talk about some of the paper products that will be going into the journals. Um, I like to use some manuscript tablets, uh, otherwise known as like the kindergarten writing paper. Uh, those always add some fun interest some ledger paper uh, you can see i got this one at a thrift store for 99 cents so i usually pay 99 cents or a dollar for my papers the uh, manuscript tablet i think i got at dollar tree sometimes you can find them at thrift stores uh, or your department stores like walmart fred myers that kind of thing you could also use some tracing paper uh, this one I got at a thrift store as well for 99 cents. You could use uh, watercolor papers, any kind of mixed media papers, um, doilies, all kinds of fun papers. You could use wrapping paper, scrapbook paper. Now I have chosen four different scrapbook papers for each book. And uh, now's the time when you want to think about themes of your books. So, you know, you can do any theme. You can do holidays, pets um seasons birthdays um, any fun events that you would like to journal for uh, recipes cooking that kind of thing um, or maybe you want to give gifts and so um, i have chosen a variety of themes and i've picked out four pieces of paper for each one so this one's going to be a baby boy themed and so the reason i picked out four is because each of my books is going to have two signatures so i want to have two signature covers and then um, two pages e inside each of the signatures. So you can choose more if you'd like to. Uh, just remember these books fill up really fast and you also wanna save room to add ephemera later. Um, if you're doing digitals, just print out two pages of your favorite pieces. You might wanna back them on cardstock for a little extra support. Um, yeah, and then the next thing I add is some um, Music paper, which is interesting because as I was tearing this out, I realized it was a, it was my favorite music book, and it's a Reader's Digest um, piano book. So Reader's Digest music is going to be going back into these Reader's Digest books. So that's kind of fun. You'll also notice that I usually fold them this way, the long ways, um, because then all of my pictures and my music go the right direction for reading. You can fold them any which way you like. I just usually prefer to fold them this way. You'll also notice that I fold my notebook papers that way. This notebook paper has been coffee dyed. You can coffee dye, tea dye, whatever dye, uh, any of the papers that you like to put in your books. Um, I also like to use some large index cards, one or two in each of the signatures, and then uh, usually two envelopes in each of the signatures as well. And now my envelopes, you can see, I have taken a dry embossing folder and run them through. Um, some of them I've also taken a die cut and die cut on a section of it and I will fill in with a pattern paper in there later. Um, so lots of fun things you can do to customize your papers uh, while you're getting ready to build and once you've already put your books together. So lots of fun things to do. Um, so just kind of consider the themes that you want to do. If you don't know the themes, you can just simply put in uh, the papers, but again, you do have to think about the signature covers as you're getting those ready. You can get the rest of the papers ready first and then start thinking about it. Um, that works as well. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be folding all of these in half and uh, folding the envelopes in half so the index cards get folded in half like this. And the um, envelopes will get them folded in half like that as well. Now don't worry how they open. I eventually will just seal this up and then I will make probably slits on the side or the top for tags. Um, so we don't need to actually use this as an envelope. You can glue it up, you can um, just seal it up however you wanna do that. And then um, my, like I said, my notebook paper, I will fold over like this. And then um, 
Once you have everything folded, then we just start cutting it down to the length that you want to have in your books. So this will get folded as well. Now this is going to be a lot longer than the book. So you do have some options. You can, you can see, oh, maybe, yeah. So you can see it's gonna hang over and you can fold it in and make some pockets like this so it would tuck this way. You can just make a little foldy flap, which sometimes is kind of fun, um, or you can trim it off. So, or you can do a variety of those things. So whichever way uh, you appeals to you, do that. And then um, the scrapbook paper, the same thing. We're going to cut it down so that it's the jacket of the whole signature. So I usually like to fold it in half so that it's six by 12. Now you don't want to cut this because, um, like you don't want to cut it to six by 12 because we need the spines of these, like here, to uh, make our signatures with. So um, you want to keep the spines, but you do want to trim, you know, trim it shorter so that it matches. And usually what I do is I just kind of line it up here. You can measure if you'd like. And then I go, okay, well, I want it trimmed about here. And then I'll use this one as a template to do the rest of them. Um, and then you, you know, you also need to, again, decide, do you want these to flip in? Um, this is also a good time to decide if you might want pockets. Instead of cutting this, you could always fold this up like this so that you have some pockets in here. Let's see. And there's a lot of different ways you can do these pockets. Some people like to cut them so that they are uh, angled on the sides here. Um, you can corner around them. You can do whatever you want to them. So many different ways to do uh, these beautiful journals. Okay, so, so that's what it would look like if it had pockets, and that's kind of nice. It puts one at the beginning and at the end of the signatures if this is your uh, main signature cover so then we still just need to trim off a little bit here and um, you can see I didn't measure how big this is so you can make it as tall or as short as you want sometimes I like some deeper pockets because if I want to put some photos in there or some bigger tags in there I know it will hold them securely so just some things to think about as you're working along this process um, you want to get everything nice and creased and um, this is what I like to call the nesting phase of a journal because you're gathering all these things um, and starting to put them together. So, um, so then we'll just trim off a little bit here and you wanna save all of your scraps because we'll be making tags and journaling cards and tabs and all kinds of fun things to put inside um, of the beautiful journals. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna start folding and I won't make you guys watch all of that. Um, and then I'll come back once everything's folded and I'll show you how I kind of put them together in, to prepare for our signatures. So hang tight for you, it'll just be a quick flash. All right, and just like that, a little YouTube magic and everything is folded. My goodness, look at this. So we've done the folding stage and the next part is the cutting stage. So um, sometimes, I will cut like the music page and the ledger, I'll cut it in half and use two parts. Sometimes I cut one a little shorter, one a little taller, uh, just kind of depends on how it fits into the book. And then um, you can always, like I said, you can trim your edges down or you can leave them and fold them. If you don't know what you want to do yet, you can just leave them. Um, you can also paper punch them so they have some decorative shape. You can cut them with pinking shears or decorative scissors. Um, so lots of things to do with those uh, edges of your papers if they're a little longer. Again, look at all this folding. This scrap of paper is insane. Um, super heavy too, but it is nice to get all of this done at one time. Um, I, a lot of times too, will keep these branding strips on and use them with my scraps of paper. So again, uh, I sometimes like to fold these up and make pockets, the scrap of paper, but some of the directional papers don't really allow for you to do that because like, if I were to fold this up, my purses would be upside down. If I were to do it the other way, the words would be upside down. So sometimes it doesn't allow for you to do pockets like that, but don't worry, you can always uh, glue in papers later if you so want a pocket. 
So the next part, I'm just going to be cutting and um, I kind of showed you guys how I do that at the beginning here. I just either decide if I want, like for the scrap of paper, decide if I want a pocket, fold it up if I do. And then um, I go ahead and trim the top and I just kind of uh, guess on the measurements. You can measure if you really, really want to. Uh, but when you're doing this many, it gets a little bit, whoops, a little bit hard to measure. Again, you don't want to go down on your quality at all just because you're doing a lot of them. But a lot of times what I'll do is just try it out and see. Uh, I like these Reader's Digest books have this uh, colored edge in here. And I like this to kind of match that. And then I'll use this one to judge the rest of mine as well. And as far as the length goes, like on this one, I'm probably going to um, cut this one because it's a pocket. And um, otherwise you could fold them in, you can decorative cut them. You, like I said, you can do so many things with them. So um, remember it will fold up like this because we're gonna have it stitched in right there. So it's gonna come up. And then, uh, like I said, I like them to match this little bit of end paper that's in there. So I don't need to cut off a lot. We'll go ahead and cut this one and then I'll tell you what it measures. But yours might be different. Uh, sometimes these old vintage books are a little on the different side. So um, use my measurements lightly. Let's see, let's make sure I've got this right. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so I have, it's about seven and a quarter tall by five and a half. So then when you open that up, it'll be double. So that makes sense. Uh, so it would be 11. So seven and a quarter by 11 if you're cutting the whole page, but I cut them folded because that's just easier for me to do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting. I won't make you guys watch that, uh, but when we come back, we'll be talking about putting them all together. And then in the next video, we'll sew the signatures into the books. All right, be back in a flash. Okay, so I have everything cut and folded. I did go ahead and glue down my envelope flaps and then I made either cuts on the top like this so that we have a pocket on both sides or I cut here and here um, or I cut up here and then down here um, and I did that for the whole stack of envelopes just to save myself some time a little later so now is the fun part we get to start making our signatures and I am so ready to have all of this stuff put away into books and off my desk because it takes a lot of room as you can see we've got everything out here so basically what you want to do is at this point I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my um, scrapbook papers I'm gonna grab one of my notebook papers and you just want to start putting them in like you would in the signature just like so and then um, we'll grab an envelope now I have two sets of music paper I've got one that's a little longer and one that's a little shorter so we'll just vary it and then um, you know, you'll want to be thinking about how it's going to go in the book. And then since I did the short music paper, I'll do the longer uh, ledger paper. And then I also have some shorter scrapbook paper. Now you can use your scraps like this to put these in here. Um, or you can use these to make ephemera with, with your scrapbook paper. I'm gonna go ahead and, and make it in here, probably more like this, like a little tuck spot or something. So there is one. Uh, and then um, we'll do the second one. And then you just make a pile of those, or you can put them right into the covers that you have. And since I did a note paper, we, oops, we will do a uh, manuscript paper. Then we do an index card. Um, now I have, see it's been, I've been away from this for a little while, so I actually have uh, papers that are supposed to go in here. So let's see, I have, 
a scrap of paper to add to the other one. Um, so I want this to be the center of the signature. So we'll go ahead and keep adding. Going to add a longer music paper. And then we will add an envelope and a shorter ledger paper. And then I still have a shorter piece of this scrapbook paper I could add as well. Maybe we'll go ahead and add that back here just for a little bit of uh, variety. And then this will go ahead and be the center of the signature. So I think this one actually is supposed to go over there. And I had this one. So I did my scrapbook papers with pockets and then a uh, scrapbook paper in the center for the signature. So I need to add this one to the center over here instead of the short one. So the short one, I will just move probably to the front here. So it's a little bit buried. There we go. And you'll probably move these around a bunch of times before you actually sew them in. So um, just kind of get a general idea. So now we have two signatures, like jackets ready to go, and those will go inside of a book. And then we just keep going. So on some of these I did pockets and some of them I did not. So this one I did, these ones I didn't. Um, so make sure what I've got going here. These ones will be the center of the signature. Okay. So um, I'll do, I'll go ahead and do this other one with you guys and then I will just go ahead and zoom through them. Well, zoom through them as quickly as uh, possibly allows and then uh, we will check back. Now, some of these um, are by theme, my envelopes, so I'm choosing the ones that I want to have in here. Same with some of my other papers. They are specific to a theme, so I'm making sure I use those for certain ones. And then um, I will have everything that I need here. This one has some paw prints. We'll go ahead and put some paw prints in here. Maybe I'll put it in here. Now there's really no rhyme or reason to this. You don't have to do them exactly the same. I like to make them a little bit variable as far as the paper size and height. Um, sometimes I will maybe turn the papers around based on um, what I think looks best if they are directional or have lines that might be directional. Um, so those are the things you want to start looking at while you're putting this together. This music paper is ripped, so I'm going to go ahead and just take it out. Um, and then you also want to start paying attention to what is going to be in the center of your signature. And like I said, for these ones, I'm going to go ahead and make it be a scrapbook paper so that when you open it up, you have something nice to look at. All right, so there's one of our dog ones. Go ahead and do this one as the outside. Now some of my scrapbook papers I did a pocket on and some of them I did not, so uh, that will be a little bit of a variance. And that's okay. Yeah, it's okay to have some things different in the books. Let's see, I've got that. Put another index card and an envelope and a longer page of music sheets. And then um, looks like maybe a shorter piece of ledger. and then our center piece. All right, you guys, so stay tuned. I am just hang out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these together and we'll come back and look at them and match them all up with the uh, jacket covers that we did previously. Okay, so here is what it looks like now. Basically, I have my 
ready to cover and two signatures. And the two signatures include a scrapbook paper, envelope, index card, music paper, smaller piece of scrapbook paper, manuscript paper, smaller piece of scrapbook paper, and then my um, center of the signature. So, and then I've got two packets like that, and some of them are very similar, like I, I traded out the manuscript paper for notebook paper in one of them. Um, some of them have longer music book page, and some of them have the shorter music book page, and so forth. But everything, um, I matched up with the covers, and uh, I will keep these signatures in here. And so you can kind of see how they go, like this one's going to be baby, and this is green and green, so it matched really well. And um, I just kind of went through and continued to do that all the way through. So our next step will be going back over our made signature packets and um, getting them all hole punched with our template and uh, putting them actually in the books. So I am going to stagger them kind of right now in this little stack here so that they will stack nicely and keep them all uh, in order so that I can put them for the next video. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, definitely let me know if you're following along. I love to think that many of you are. I also have been doing uh, Facebook Lives on Facebook. It's under Fraps and Scraps as well. So you can find me there if you're missing me. And I also am on Instagram and even on TikTok. So um, Instagram and TikTok, it's under Frap Girl, but uh, Facebook and YouTube is Fraps and Scraps. So you can definitely find me on all of those platforms. I'm happy to connect with all of you and um, I'm excited to get all of these turned into books. This is what they they look like in this big stack. So uh, in the next step, we will be punching our holes, making a template, punching our holes in the signatures and getting them sewn in. And that is when it becomes super exciting because to me, that is when they actually become a book because they have pages again. So stay tuned for the next video. If you didn't catch video one or two, definitely go back and catch those so you know where we are and uh, you can definitely start making some of these if you need them for gifts or just wanna keep them on the shelf or if you plan to sell some, whatever uh, you plan to do with the mass make. Um, and uh, I am excited to continue on with this project. I have some covers planned and some ephemera and of course stitching in. So we do have a couple more videos to go yet. So stay tuned for those. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your being here with me and working on these projects together. And I will see you next time in the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, and comment down below. Bye, guys.